The industry is at a, uh, I would call almost a crossroads. Um, there's more excitement in our industry than there's been in decades because what's happened over the last decades is it's kind of been more of the same. Vehicles have gotten a little lighter and they've gotten a little more fuel efficient and they've gotten uh, a, a little more functional and they've gotten a little easier to use and they're a little more connected and that stuff sort of started you know in the in the sort of 50s and 60s and we've worked our way up to this point. The industry is, is changing in a very major way now. Um, the, uh, the focus on sustainability and low carbon footprint is driving new powertrain technologies that haven't been looked at in many, either at all or in many, many years. Um, the, uh, uh, the movement toward um, self-driving vehicles and people, uh, uh, frankly, especially when you get into younger folks like millennials, there's not a lot of desire to own a car. And so um, the autonomous vehicle movement will mean that most people who are out suffering through car ownership, which is probably 70% plus, will no longer have to own a vehicle. And so the industry changes radically when that happens. Electric vehicles and low carbon footprint, uh, as technology changes, probably takes over from internal combustion. That changes the whole world economy. At the same time, it opens doors, it closes other ones. Um, if you add self-driving to this, that means that a lot of, of vehicle purchases and vehicle ownership, it won't be a B2C business anymore. It'll be a kind of a B2B business where many of the vehicles that are produced will be, will be bought by businesses or perhaps the companies manufacturing the vehicles will run those businesses. So you'll see a, very, a steep drop off in car ownership over the next couple of decades, maybe three decades, and not necessarily a reduction in the volume of vehicles that are being produced. This will spread over the world in different ways because the developed companies will embrace this technology first. Uh, the developing countries will stay with the current technology so we'll have to kind of manage the old infrastructure and the new infrastructure at the same time as this technology takes probably 20 to 30 years to, to sweep across the planet um, and so that all, all those things are going to make this business way different than it is now. How does that play out? Well Probably most of the vehicles that are sold today are actually not aspirational. They're vehicles that people buy because they can afford them and because they need good solid transportation to either uh, get themselves to and from work or there may be uh, it's a husband and wife situation or perhaps there's a family involved, but people buy a product that, they, that, that meets their needs. And again, people sort of suffer through car ownership because a lot of people don't want to have the car, but it's required. So all those people will move off into self-driving and, 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 and pickup services. So people that do want to purchase a vehicle, and it will be a much smaller subset than it is today, uh, those people will want vehicles that are no excuses vehicles. So you're gonna see, uh, uh, you're gonna see this whole giant segment of sort of self-driving vehicles that are sold to other businesses and people sort of use them for their daily transportation. And then you'll see this smaller subset of people who just love cars, but they're not gonna want a, a sort of a this is all I can afford kind of car. People are going to want cars that are really special. So I see the market bifurcating into this sort of pedestrian thing that's mostly run by businesses and the, and the, and the cult of people who love driving and love cars and will push that part of it into something really different and it probably is likely to be quite special.